With Jake Paul vs. Mike Tyson going down July 20th, there's been a lot of speculation as to who's going to win this fight. Obviously, back in the day, Mike Tyson was known as one of the baddest men on the planet. He was the undisputed heavyweight champ for a while, but he did retire 20 years ago and fought Roy Jones in an exhibition in 2020, which wasn't the best showing, but it is something we could analyze. Take a few key points from it to see how Mike could come out in this fight and potentially win. Jake Paul starting his boxing career around 21, beating a bunch of UFC legends, but they aren't boxers. And that's been the biggest takeaway from him in his journey to world champion. But it's fighting an old and retired Mike Tyson going to help you achieve that goal. So Mike Tyson, if we look at some of his new training clips, a lot of them are cut up. And after one combination, there's a new clip of another combination and so on and so forth. Who knows what happens in between those breaks. Maybe Mike is exhausted after just one pad session. Me to tell you something about that video, I did that video and I was in bed for a week. That was 30 seconds and I was in bed for a week tells me a lot about Mike's endurance even back in the day after you got through three, four, five rounds with Mike. He would kind of gas and have nothing left. And that's cause in the early rounds from the opening bell, you'd be lucky if you weren't dead. But now being 57 years old, 58. By the time fight night comes, I'm worried about his durability, his endurance, depending on how many rounds we're going. Does Mike even have enough gas to do six, eight, ten? And I get default Roy Jones, they won eight rounds. But there was a lot of hugging in that fight and not much output. I think there was one round where Mike only threw two punches. So what happens when he's in there with a fresh, faster, stronger, more durable guy in Jake? Now there are a couple things about Mike's style that will play in his favor, obviously. Jake fights with his hands down, has a very lousy jab. If I'm being honest, when Jake throws his jab, he keeps his right hand closer to his hip than he does his chin. This is perfect for Mike's style because he could just slip on inside catch him with the left dead against Roy Jones and did it pretty much through his whole career counter punching his Mike's bread and butter. Which is why I think his style is kind of tailor made for Jake because every time Jake ends up on the ropes, which he's mostly going to be on the back foot this fight. I don't see him trying to engage with Mike unless Mike don't want to engage with Jake, which he's the smaller guy. I think he's going to have to in order to win. And Mike's coach saying he's going to knock out Jake within the first round tells me that they're not even worried about cardio. So what Mike has to do is make Jake respect him early, land a big shot of any sort, get him on the back foot, make him hesitant to get on the inside. That is where you win. You don't want to fight in the center where you could just jab your head off again. Jake 62 longer reach Mike isn't the tallest guy, only 5'10", but he will have size on him that Jake has never been in front of before. I would think imagine probably like 230, 240 LB. So if he cracks Jake early, it could be curtains. We saw how Jake dealt with pressure from a 47 year old Anderson Silva, a 40 year old Tyon Woodley. He leaves himself vulnerable to counter shots, which again is Mike's bread and butter. Jake's defense is to attack whenever he's put on the ropes instead of shelling up. He feels the need to go for a counter, which usually ends with him getting caught round one. Mike has to utilize the jab to the body. Don't immediately go upstairs because again, got more reach than you. If you guys trade, he's going to land every time. Push him back with the jab. Once he got him on the back foot, start changing angles, you know, show Jake something he's never seen before. And Jake again, he's still early in this box and he hasn't seen many styles that Mike has. That's why I'm saying it's not that far-fetched to say that Mike could win this fight when you look at it from both sides. Mike has all the experience. Jake's only had 10 fights, some of them only lasting one, two rounds against opponents, wasn't even in there long enough to really learn or gain anything. Whereas Mike has been in there with some of the best and it's not like Jake really does anything outstanding in the ring. He's actually pretty basic. I mean, his combinations are star look better, but his shot selection really just consists of jab check left H, right end of the body overhand, and his defense is really just him being a low eave bumping up and down on his feet in and out movement as far as his hand placement. It's closer to his waist than... It is his chin doesn't use much head movement, but when he does, he's pretty much staring at the ground. So yeah, again, I give Mike a really good chance in this fight. I'm more concerned about his chin and his cardio as far as pure skills. Mike, again, he's having more experience. He's had a lot more time to work on his craft. He's been doing it since a kid. 
Jake again, only like five years in the game, he still has a ton to learn. So yeah, July 20th, we will see how it all goes down. Thank you guys for watching, make sure to subscribe, like and comment. Let me know your thoughts who you think will coming out on top. This fight. And why see you guys in the next one. Take care.